So Steven and I knew we were already having an issue with the rabbits, right? If you've seen any of our other videos, you know that we have told you guys we're gonna have to do a total rabbitry rebuild. Well, we're out of time. We can't wait till the fall. We haven't lost any more to heat stroke, basically, but they are miserable. And we cannot allow that to continue. We can't. Um, it's not right. It's not fair. Uh, it's not the humane thing. You know, it's a very surreal feeling to know that you have animals in your care. And if you don't fix it, they'll die. Like, that's a heartbreaking reality of homesteading. Uh, no matter how hard you try to give them the best life you can, the weather, predators, things just happen. But this is something we're going to give it our best. Our best. <laughs> we're going all the way, guys. We're literally converting a building that we purchased to sell products out of and to do educational classes out of, we are converting that to a new rabbitry out of desperation to just save them. At this point, that's literally all we're trying to do is get them out of the summer alive. Hello everyone, welcome back to Storky Farmstead. So I wanted to talk to you real quick about this excessive heat that we're having. We're not only under one excessive heat warning, we're under two, and we're also under an excessive heat watch. And basically what that means, guys, is that it's so hot at 6, 12 p.m. Watch the following clip. I wanted to show this to you guys because I want you to understand what we're dealing with here in Southeast Louisiana. Look at the date. It's obviously today, August the 12th, 2023. Look at the time, 6, 12 p.m. Look at the temperature right-hand corner, 100 degrees. Guys, that is without the heat index okay it's without the heat index look at the one below that you see the little rain umbrella and the drops so far this year in the past eight months louisiana on my property has only received 39 and a half inches of rain and for the month of august we've only had one tenth of an inch it's so hot at 6 12 p.m it's a hundred degrees out here the evening temperature is simply not going to drop below 80 degrees, which means that the animals, the livestock, the plants, ourselves, we cannot get our internal body temperatures to cool off enough to face day after day of excessive heat. With the heat index, we were hitting 117 degrees today. Now, I've been on this property for four and a half years, and that is a new one for me. So, I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna be doing this evening, because yeah, it is 6 12 at night and we have finally come outside and decided today is the day it has to get done today we literally waited all day to get out here 117 degrees that's excessive that's excessive our temperature gauge on our five and one accurate thermometer literally hit 110 degrees okay so that's without the heat index that is the flat temperature on my property that happened just a little while ago. That's extreme. We can't work in that. Um, I say we, I can't work in that. My husband works in that every single day. I'm not asking him his one day off to give up a few hours in the AC out of this heat. It could potentially kill him if I keep pushing him to work all form 40 hours a week, come home and bust it with me all weekend long. Like that is not humanly possible. So, but you see the building behind me. So this is what we're gonna do. This building is in deep shade 22 hours a day. Two hours, the sun hits it directly. However, we've come up with a fix for that. We're gonna run fans crisscrossed back and forth where the airflow moves the heat back and forth and flushes it out. But this is our best option for our rabbits at this moment to save their lives. We're literally going to hang, because if you've seen any of our videos, most of my cages hang. We do that for a couple of reasons. Snakes, rats, red ants. So we're gonna hang these cages going this way, right? Well, this, I can't, I can't get it to this way, guys, with ways. And we're gonna do three sets 
We're gonna move all the moms away from the babies a little earlier than we like. It's like five weeks. We usually leave them to six, but it's too hot. The moms cannot take it. We're gonna move the babies off of them a week early. We're gonna separate everybody out, give everybody plenty of space, get those fans crisscrossed. Um, anything else particular you can think of, Steve? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'm trying to tell everybody what we're doing, like why we're doing it so late in the evening and what, what our point of this is. All right, well, the rabbit cage is gonna be running this um, way. Let me turn the camera on. Let me turn the Go ahead and explain to everybody what you're fixing to do. Then to rip this board right here. Okay, yeah, when you say rip, slow down. What are you gonna do with it? Tell them. I'm gonna cut this board in half. And make it into a? Two by four. Very good. And I'm gonna hang them up that way. I have where I can hang my wires at. Yeah. So I can hang the rabbit cages. Yeah. And get them in the cool air instead of out in the middle of the sun. Like right now, that rabbit tree over there is in the middle of the sun. And it's yeah. there 95% of the day. This here gets sunlight for about two hours. And that's it. That's it. Now, um, a lot of our rabbits are here in a racking pen. But as you can see, as the sun goes down, it begins to beat into these cages, like direct, you see how the light's directly into these rabbit cages? I told, I just showed you guys, like definitive proof, it's 100 degrees and now the sun is hitting them. Even if it's just two hours, it's enough to kill them. If you raise rabbits, especially in places like Texas, Louisiana, Arizona, Mississippi, Arkansas, Tennessee, Florida, your Southern states, rabbits prefer cold they it is a proven fact that for a male rabbit his sperm count drops drastically above 85 degrees so even if you're going to push through and breed in the hottest part of the summer you're going to have much smaller litters because he just doesn't have the sperm count the females um they they can't keep their body their internal body cool enough when they're pregnant we just learned that the hard way their ears are how they dissipate their heat so that is why you see them ears straight up and the ears look like they're pulsing, right? All the blood vessels are very visible. Um, the reason for that is that is how they're getting the heat out of their body is through their ears. They do not sweat and they really should not be panting. If they're panting, you're, you're pretty much fixing to lose it. Um, something Stephen and I, here baby, I'll move over here. Some of the things Stephen and I have learned over the last three and a half years raising rabbits in Louisiana, um, it, we have, there's a certain thing that we look for if we're worried that a rabbit's fixing to die of heat exhaustion, right? They do this. All right, when you see this, head straight up, body out like that on a rabbit, they're way too hot. At that point, they're doing everything in their possible possible for that animal to survive the heat. The heat has gone, they're too hot. The head goes up, they start to get like a Looks like water around the nose, the mouth, down their chin. What well, some people would say sweat, it's not. It's actually mucus because now they're beginning to have respiratory issues. So I'm telling you guys this because I want you to know what the warning signs of a heat stroke looks like in a rabbit. But I also want you to understand that you can put a water bottle in there. It may help to cool them off. Here's the problem. They don't, they cool up by their ears. All right. So I've had people ask me, you know, what about getting a misting fan? You'll cause a respiratory issue extremely fast. They are heat sensitive, okay? So it's misting water in 110 degrees. That water's not cold. It's not cold. It's probably hot. So Steve, Steve's doing it redneck style. Um, you guys know that we're debt free. We don't use debit cards. So he's using a chainsaw. He is using a chainsaw to basically cut that board in half and make two by four so we don't have to go out and purchase them. And don't do this at home. We have no safety gear on. While my husband prepares materials for this build out and sorry and movement of our rabbitry to a whole new place on the property, guys, not joking. This is it for us. We've got to get these rabbits to the remainder of August. It's so hot. It's so hot here. 
it hurts my heart for them. But I'm gonna show you guys um, how well the garden's doing. It's doing remarkably well for the fact that I don't water like most people. So I wanna show it to you guys real quick. And then uh, go show you my fig trees and show you what I'm fixing to have to work on. Okay, here we've got tomatoes. We've got bell peppers. We've got squash. All of this doing um, sweet potatoes. Most of it is doing really, really well. Okra, watermelon, corn. I mean, doing really, really well. Not having any trouble with these plants. Now, I will tell you guys, some of the things I've seeded recently have just simply not come up. That has to do with the heat. The soil temperature is just too hot. But I did succession plant another row of corn, and it is loving it. Corn, okra, watermelon, pumpkin, squash, all of that loves the heat. Get it in the soil. It's not going to hurt it. I will say, this kind of broke my heart. These are absolutely phenomenal. Um, they're purple whole snap bean peas, and, or snap beans, the plants, and none of them will give me a bean. It's too hot. It's simply too hot. However, the pumpkins are just slamming with it. So I wanted to show that to you guys. You can still grow a garden in this heat. I would not transplant anything into the soil right now. It is entirely too hot to be transplanting. You need to be direct seeding. If you try to transplant, you're just gonna burn it. It's just not gonna make it. But um, the cantaloupe is doing really, really well. The cucumbers, again, really, really well, really well. So I am excited. The garden's doing very nice. Now, I do not bring water to the front part of our two acres. I'm not doing it. It's too much work. This fig tree has had no water in a month, and it is beginning to wilt. So I am going to drag the water hose up here and right here, the white, you see? I'm gonna go ahead and deep water this fig tree. The reason I've not had to water it, it is heavy mulched. The roots go very deep, but even this baby has hit its limits on no water and heat. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We have about four more hours of work to do. It's still 99 degrees, it's seven o'clock. Like it just will not stop guys. I'm praying for all of you guys your farms, your homesteads. May God send us a cool breeze and a whole lot of water. So you guys have a blessed night because say a little prayer for Stephen and I. We have a lot of work to do. And like I said, we're out of time. So if you're going to raise them and you're going to bring them on your property, then it doesn't matter if you don't get any sleep.